Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in Internet Shitlords. And uh, today I'm going to do a video on a topic that I was planning to use in my live stream on Sunday. And then I just forgot. And I guess it's a kind of okay that I forgot because the live stream went on for like more than three hours. It was really great. I found out that suddenly I have super chats. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of very good topics there. But there was this one that I was going to talk about, and then somehow I forgot. But it's it's also kind of good I forgot, because right after that, I guess, at least I saw it after my, my live stream. So um, I don't know. Maybe he did it before. I, I don't know. But uh, Diversity and Dragons did a video on this topic. So um, here's what the topic is about. Steve Jackson Games, during Gen Con, at their booth or whatever, put out a promotional pin that if you are you if you're familiar with Steve Jackson games, they're the ones that did Illuminati and Illuminati NWO and and they've also of course done GURPS and the Fantasy Trip and and Munchkin. They have a lot of products, but the one that they're that that they use as their official logo is the symbol that they have of the Illuminati, which is um, well, it's, it's the eye in the triangle is what it's called as a symbol. Um, so it's like a in, the case, in their case, it's a pyramid with an eye on top, but it's meant to be symbolic of the of the Illuminati that is uh, a big deal in their card game uh, about secret societies and conspiracies, which is a comedic card game, right? It's a it's a it's a goofy card game uh, about how silly you know secret societies are, in a way. Um, but now they've decided to come out with the Illuminati pin. Done in the colors, the rainbow, well, it's not really rainbow anymore, it's now it's like black and brown in it, right? But anyways, the, the multicolored flag of LGBTQ+, plus add however many letters and numbers you want beyond that, um, activism, okay? And they talked about, you know, they did quite a bit of virtue signaling on social media about how proud they are about these pins. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I had seen this during Gen Con. I almost made my list of the worst stuff in Gen Con. It, it didn't just because it was... It's too cloying to be to be classifiable among the worst, let's say. And uh, and then um, you know I posted about it on Twitter. It got quite a good response. Uh, and uh, you know now Diversity and Dragons did a video about it. I'm not sure if he first heard of this from my Twitter post or from somewhere else. It could have been from somewhere else because I'm sure there were other people reposting it. But he, he in his video. What he says, what he does, is he exposes the person who would be in charge of making that pin, right? Of, of, of who would have probably made the call. And uh, surprise, surprise, it turns out that she's like this ultra leftist, feminist uh, weirdo who has had many public social media postings about, you know, how much she. She hates men in general and white men in particular and, and uh, you know, all, all kinds of woke nonsense, right? She's got danger hair and everything, right? So if you want to find out about the person who was probably behind the rainbow Illuminati symbol, <laughs> that would be uh, – you, you should check out Diversity and Dragons video. It's quite good. Um, but, of course, I mean the ultimate responsibility is Steve Jackson's and – I'm, I'm guessing this is not something that was that, that could possibly have been done without his permission or without his knowledge, certainly. Um, so, you know, and, and Steve Jackson is known to be um, kind of leftist and had to have become more strongly leftist the time when went on. Like in the 90s, he was a bit of a hero to some people because he was he was this kind of libertarian counterculture guy, you know, like and, and he'd been raided by the FBI when they thought his cyberpunk GURP cyberpunk source book was going to be like a guide to hacking, you know, to hacking the department of defense or something. I don't know what. So, uh, you know, and, and he was, yeah, he was kind of badass. but over time he became more and more st struck with the progressive virus. And, uh, I think also TDS, you know, so he's, he's now gotten to the highest level of ridiculousness. And you know that, as the more that someone, because to progressivism is totalitarian, the more you, you become that, the less able you are to be funny about anything, right? And, and that's why comedy was something that used to be mainly the, the, the 
providence of the left, because the left had the counterculture for a long time. Comedy is always funnier when you're when you're breaking rules to do it. And the problem is now on the left, you're not allowed to break any of the real rules anymore, any of their rules. So all the comedy there is either horrible or old, right? And uh, and now, you know, if you like it used to be that for the, the king of satire was like the Daily Show, right? And now the king of satire is the Babylon Bee. But and this is where I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about this woman anymore. You want to know about her, go check out Diversity and Dragons channel. I'm going to talk about the symbol itself, <laughs> the eye in the triangle. It's a, it's a very significant symbol in Western symbolism, actually, in, in general, but also in Western esoteric uh, symbolism. And this is the, the, let's start, though, by what it symbolizes to Steve Jackson Gaines, right? It's obviously the logo of the company, true. However, it is also a, a, an image that is associated with one particular part of one of their games, which is Illuminati. And Illuminati is about evil conspiracies trying to take over and control the world, right? About these, these people with these brutal totalitarian ambitions that want to infiltrate and control. Like it's a card game where you collect different parts of society, where it's like, you know, the Boy Scouts or... Uh, you know, the army or UFO cults or whatever, and you, you gather them together to give you resources to fight the other conspiracies. It's probably a game that wouldn't be allowed anymore because, <laughs> you know, that would be, it would be considered, I don't know, transphobic against the, the WEF or something like that. <laughs> but but the, it was a very, very successful game. And, uh, you know, the, the key part of it, though, in this aspect is that the Illuminati are bad. Right. And in, in, in the game itself, in Steve Jackson's own game, they're the bad guys. I mean, all of them are the bad guys. It's not a really a game that has good guys. Right. Um, and it's and it's goofy and it's funny. Right. But it but it's still about that. And they also did GURPS Illuminati, where they talk about secret societies. And again, the Illuminati are seen as the bad guys. The idea is you're the guy fighting the conspiracy or something like that. Or, you know, if you want to play a bad guy game, you're one of the conspiracies fighting one of the other conspiracies. OK, so. I think they really didn't think this through. That's where I'm getting to with all this. Okay. Because, you know, um, symbol of bad guys, symbols of ultimate evil, people that want to control the world. Let's put the rainbow flag on it. Right. Is, is that really, is that the message that they were trying to send? No, I don't think so. I, I would, be, it would be hilarious if this was meant to be an intentional commentary, but we know it's not like, unfortunately we know that Steve Jackson is just, a brain dead believer at this point in, in progressivism. And he wasn't trying to make some kind of a funny here. He, he's, she just thought, well, you put rainbow flags on everything. You put rainbow flags on everything. Really. I'm, I'm waiting to see for, you know, like at some point, someone to put a rainbow flag on a swastika just because, you know, it's pride. You have to show pride, right? Like, I mean, like whatever it is, doesn't matter how horrible it is, you know, like radiation symbol, rainbow flag, you know? Um, and so, like, you know, he accidentally, he unintentionally suggests, is suggesting that LGBTQ plus activism is part of the Illuminati conspiracy, right? Or something like that, right? Or that, like, LGBTQ plus activism is trying to control people and control the world, right? <laughs> I, I'm sure that wasn't what he intended, but it is what it says, right? Like, that's what that Im image implies to people today. So, you know, I, I don't think any of them thought that through. Like, let me put it this way, okay? Exact same symbol, the pyramid with the triangle, uh, the, the pyramid with the, with the eye in the top of the triangle and done in rainbow flag colors. Instead of Steve Jackson games, it's Alex Jones who's making them and selling them. That would be a hate crime, wouldn't it? Like everybody would say, that's a hate crime. That right there is a hate crime. The exact same image. That's clearly a hate crime. Alex Jones is suggesting that that gay activism and trans activism or whatever is an Illuminati plot. Right? <laughs> so hate crime, right? <laughs> like that's, that's, that's what I'm getting to here. That's, what, that's my principal point. So be, because that's only taken about nine minutes and, and now uh, I would also like to give you guys a little bit of a bonus content. I'm going to explain what the eye in the triangle actually is and what the Illuminati are just to make things very clear. So, you can find parts of what I'm about to say in the Invisible College, where I talk about 
all kinds of, well, I write about, uh, all kinds of secret societies, the role of intelli intelligence agencies of various countries, involvement in the occult, um, large-scale magical movements, uh, and all kinds of other, other stuff. Invisible College is not like GURPS Illuminati, because it is not a, it's not meant to be um, kind of tongue-in-cheek, right? And, and it is not based on conspiracy theories. It's based on history more than anything. Though, I mean, some of history does have tones of conspiracy theories, right? Um, and, like, I mean, they're, the, the CIA and the, the KGB and military intelligence in Britain, all of them did serious studies on, like, occult topics, right? <laughs> for one, for starters, right? And that's in there. And, like, and the magics, and it's not Cthulhu, right? The monsters and the magic are not made up, they're based on actual occultism. In fact, if you pick up the Invisible College, um, first of all, let me say, you will not learn how to do real magic by buying the Invisible College, right? Nor is any real magic in the Invisible College, like how Job supposedly put a spell on his Lamentations source book that curses whoever reads it or whatever. Um, no, I, I put no spells into the Invisible College itself, right? Nor will you learn to do real magic. However, if you buy and read The Invisible College, you will probably end up knowing more about occultism and hermeticism, real world occultism and hermeticism, than 95% of people who claim to do those things, <laughs> because most of them are woefully ill-informed. Um, so it's like one of the best general guides on occultism that you could possibly get. Besides that, though, it's a kick-ass modern RPG where you play uh, members of a, of a, of a heroic uh, a secret occult movement that is fighting against various evil and sinister occult movements for the to determine the future spiritual evolution of humanity. Um, and it's you know if you liked um, if you like Alan Moore's Promethea or um, The Invisibles by Grant Morrison um, and and that you know if you if you're into like that sort of like high match of the John Constantine stuff like that right. Um, and you know, and if you're or if you're into like spy stuff or secret society stuff, you're going to like the Invisible College. So be sure to check that out. Um, and in there, I tell you about the the original, the real Illuminati. The real Illuminati are a group that actually did exist, but only for about eight years, and that was way back in from 1776 to 1784. There were they were a group that were founded in Germany. <clears throat> And they were a group of um, Enlightenment rationalists in the continental style, which is to say they believed that uh, reason should replace religion and dogma um, in a similar way to how the French revolutionaries did this. Like in France, when the French Revolution happens, they shut down all the churches. They kick out all the churches. They kill a lot of the, the people involved. And then they... They replayed like Notre Dame becomes the cathedral to reason, and people would go and and listen to speeches about reason every once a week uh, or every ten days or something like that. I forget, but uh, anyways, it was um, so like they they believed in that their view of the of the Enlightenment concept was this kind of uh, completely anti clerical, anti religious, anti superstitious what what we would now today call material positivism, basically. Um, which was different from the Enlightenment values of the British tradition, which ended up informing the American Revolution, which was an Enlightenment value very strongly based on the idea of um, reason requiring a foundation in a moral principle, which by, which by default requires some kind of guiding force to that moral principle, i.e. a supreme being, right? Um, so the the... Founder of the Bavarian Illuminati was a guy named Adam Weishaupt, and his goal was basically to take over the world. Um, he believed that he was the most rational human being in the world, <laughs> and that he would get together a group of of similarly, you know, sophisticated thinkers, and they would overthrow every monarchy and every church in Europe and create a new golden age where they would be secretly running everything from the shadows, you know. Um, they, they decided that the way to do this was by infiltrating, because some of them already were kind of, had kind of joined the Freemasons, thinking that Freemasonry was sort of like that when it wasn't, um, 
they decided that they were going to achieve this by infiltrating Freemasonry on the continent and taking it over. And so uh, the Illuminati began to um, spread into continental Freemasonry. They would join lodges and then they would try to recruit more people to their special secret society where like the, the, the real aim was limited in, the, in knowledge to a relatively small inner circle of Weisselt and, and the people, I'd say his friends, but it was more like the people who paid him and sucked up to him. You know, <laughs> um, this is a, this is an old story. It's, it's something that's repeated over and over again. It's, it's not really a, an occult group in any real way. They didn't actually believe in anything occult. Um, but it's, and what it is, is it's a secret um, conspiracy, a political conspiracy disguised as a, a secret society, right? An, an, or, an, or a mystical group. Um, and it's had, it happened many times in the past before the Illuminati and many times after, like Bedou in, in, in Italy, right? Um, so pretty quickly in some of these lodges that they were trying, Masonic lodges that they were trying to recruit in, you know, they did get some converts, of course, because uh, continental masonry was also kind of infected by that positivist and very strongly anti-clerical perspective, which is something that made it different than the much more sensible <laughs> uh, Anglosphere masonry. Um, but there were also a lot of uh, some people that found out about this, possibly because they'd been marked as poss possible candidates for recruitment and did not, you know, they didn't like this. They did not agree with this. And so very quickly what happened is that there's a, a process of purging out all the, 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 the guys that have been in the Illuminati from masonry. And then so at some point, the authorities in Bavaria were informed of this. And so, like I said, no more, only about eight years after they'd started, they were raided, rounded up. Some of them were arrested. And uh, yeah, they were, that was the end of them, basically. Um, you know, if you want to, a larger explanation of the of the Illuminati and the context of Freemasonry itself. Um, I would recommend John Dickey's book, The Craft: How How Freemasons Created the Modern World, and uh, you know that's a very useful text. Uh, he's not a Mason; he's a historian, uh, but uh, he, he does a very very good job, uh, a quite honest one that shows all the good and the bad. Uh, and in the chapter, his chapter on the Illuminati is pretty good. Uh, his chapter on Pedro is even better because his his specialty is Italian history. Anyhow, um, so that was that movement. That movement ceased to exist, like in eighteen eighty in seventeen eighty four, right? And after that, nobody talked about it. Nobody thought about it for for two hundred years, right? Until these guys in the nineteen sixties came along and started. A, you know, they were also a kind of rationalist guys. Uh, they were hippies, but you know, these libertarian hippies that were basically anti-authoritarianism. They didn't like conspiracy theories. And at that time, you know, this was when there was the, the, the Kennedy assassination conspiracy theories and the moon project conspiracy theories and all that stuff. And they, they weren't keen on this. And so they started a kind of fake religious movement of their own that was um, called Discordianism. And one of them ended up working for Playboy magazine, which was something they did like, you know, like they started this, this quasi-religion, which is actually a religion about thinking for yourself and, you know, doing whatever and not, not following dogma, right? And uh, when they were pissed off about, you know, these conspiracy theories, the guy, the one of them who worked at Playboy decided that he was going to use his position there in the magazine to, to try to get convince people, to change people's minds about believing in conspiracy theories. And he did this by making up a fake letter to the editor of Playboy. You know, the famous letters, the letter section of the Playboy magazine, right? He wrote one where instead of, you know, talking about, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened to me when, you know, I went to deliver a pizza or something like that, right? It was like this, this insane rambling story about this guy who had discovered that actually the, there was this group, this sinister group from the, ninth, from the 18th century called the Bavarian Illuminati, and they control everything. They control the sun and the moon, and they control the government of every nation and all this stuff. And, and nobody knows this except him, but you know somehow he's figured out the truth, right? 
Um, and it was it was absolutely satire, right? It was huge. It was completely satirical. The guy, it was a fraud pit letter. He wrote it himself. He posted it as if it had been sent to the magazine. And his goal with this was to kind of, so that anyone who'd read it would, would think about this and think of how stupid conspiracy theories mostly are, right? Um, especially the ones that are like these kind of confabulated ones that require an enormous suspension of disbelief. Because, of course, there are conspiracies that are real. We, we've seen them very recently, right? But, but usually those aren't like these, these grand secret movement conspiracies that span the ages and whatnot, right? Like it's, it's just stuff like lying about certain pharmaceuticals. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... Unfortunately, after he publishes, the month after he publishes, he was expecting to hear people say how funny it was or something. And instead of what he got was like tons of letters from people who said, yeah, I believe the same thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, I know about the Illuminati. And then like all these people that decided that, that this was their, their moment to come forward and also share their crazy conspiracy theory stuff. And, and then, you know, the Bavarian Illuminati suddenly after a 200-year gap – or you know, almost 200 years ago, it came back into the common language as the like super conspiracy. But this was like in 1978 or something like that. It was, it was very recent, right? And then he had uh, Robert Anton Wilson published a book series, the, the Illuminatus Trilogy, which is also sort of satirical about conspiracies. And again, people just picked up on this more and more, right? So that's why people now think that the, the Bavarian Illuminati are this like super conspiracy that or that they're a group that exists now. It doesn't. They hasn't existed. Anything real, like when someone tells you they're from the Illuminati, well, whatever it is, it's not the real Illuminati. The original Illuminati ceased to exist in 1884, all right? So that that's basically the story of them uh, and why it's all very silly. But... Um, the symbol uh, that, it, that, that they use, the eye in the triangle, is not originally an Illuminati symbol. It's not. Now, as an Illuminati symbol, you could think of it as an evil symbol, right? Like it's, it was meant to be representative of themselves as the supreme power. It was a usurpation of the original symbol, in fact, um, and that they would be able to secretly monitor everything from afar, right? Like that they would be the, the secret chiefs, the secret rulers of the world. Um, and, and so like there, yes, you could say it's a sinister symbol. It was a sinister, it was a symbol that was made into a kind of sinister symbol due to a mis their misappropriation of it. Originally that symbol of the eye in the triangle, it's called the eye of providence. The reason it's on the dollar bill in the United States and the, is because, you know, the great seal of the United States has it is because that symbol was a very common symbol in the 18th century. It had been a common symbol throughout the Middle Ages. And what it represents is God. That's what it represents. It represents God as the eye of providence looking down upon creation and, and tr monitoring creation, right? A God that is, that is observing us um, with his all-seeing eye and uh, looking... For us to, to, to be faithful and obedient and to practice virtue and zeal, right? Um, the, the reason it's a triangle is because of the Holy Trinity, right? It's the, 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 the concept of it is a fundamental, it's a Christian symbol. And it's, it was used in Christian symbolism since the very early Middle Ages. Uh, you'll find in a lot of pieces of art in, in, from the medieval and the Renaissance, of the eye and the triangle taking the being positioned to kind of be a representation of the presence of God in the same way that let's say a skull is the representation of mortality. Um, a memento mori, right? Um, so, so the, the eye of Providence is uh, in fact a, a symbol of divinity, right? And, and, you know, it represents, like I said, the, the father, the son and the Holy spirit, right? And it represents the three fundamental qualities of God, which is uh, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipotent, sorry, and omnipresent. Um, it represents the virtues that, that are um, bound, that bind one to God, which are faith, hope, and charity, right? Um, so, you know, these, this Trinity, the, the Trinities are the uh, a symbol that has always been associated with um, 
with divinity in the Judeo-Christian context, not just Judaism, not, not just Christianity itself, but even like from Judaism, the triangle is is associated with that, right? And and it's um, and it's something that ha- is is a dead giveaway as to what this is about, right? Um, now, most people, especially a lot of the kind of modern day conspiracy theorists that go on about this, they don't know this, right? <laughs> they don't really understand. And of course, a lot of occultists don't understand either because there's a bunch of them that are probably like, that probably aren't comfortable with Christianity or, you know, the idea of, of you know, a supreme monotheistic God. Like this is, this is the this is a, this was a big symbol, obviously, with the founding fathers, many of whom were Masons, not all of them, but they all were were on board with this symbol because all of them what well, all of them were, they weren't all Freemasons, but quite a lot of them were, um, but they were all Enlightenment thinkers, and one of the the central aspects of the Enlightenment as it manifested in the Anglosphere in the British world was the principle of the universal fatherhood of God and the universal brotherhood of man, right? Those are the principles on which the Western enlightenment is founded. That from, from there we derive things like freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, freedom of speech. From there we derive the concept of the individual um, value of, of, uh, of worth of a human being where all men are created equal. That's where we derive um, all, of these, all of these concepts of hu- that, that development to human rights, basically, um, that that we all benefited from today, and it's also where rationalism is seen to derive from, right? Like that, rationalism is a is an is a tool that depends upon uh, having a grounding in a in a fundamental moral principle. If there isn't a fundamental moral pr- moral principle, rationalism becomes a monstrosity, which we've seen over and over in history, right? Like the you know, communism and whatnot, right? Uh, so that's rationalism run amok, right? Uh, so anyways, there are actually two ways that this uh, Steve Jackson game's Eye in the Triangle um, could be, right? It could be that, it, that you know, they are, if, if, if they are aware that it is ad, in fact a, you know, Christian symbol, then uh, you're what you're, are, I, by putting the rainbow flag over top it, I guess you're making a, a statement that is uh, meant to, in some way, be offensive, um, or by putting the rainbow flag on top of it as the, the evil symbol of world dominance that is <laughs> that was represented by the Illuminati. Uh, you're saying that they want to control the world. Is that what you're saying, Steve Jackson? Are you like actually telling us that LGBTQ plus activists are essentially a bunch of demented rationalist fascists that want to control the world? Um, I don't know. <laughs> are you accidentally, or are you just being accidentally based? Is that what's happening? So, you know, it's it's very, very funny to me. Um, and uh, I don't know, like, there's also one last possibility, which maybe maybe this, this woman who d- would have been the one to, to green light this absolutely did mean it that way, right? absolutely did mean it intentionally. Because let's face it, we're now at that point in the, the course of history, in the slippery slope, as we, we would call it. We always, all of us, me too, used to think it was it was an exaggeration, but now it's become blatantly clear, right? It went, things went in a very short span of time with the left from being, well, we just want everybody to, to have a chance to, um, you know, you, you're not supposed to disagree to, you must openly and actively agree or we'll kill you, right? We'll destroy your life at the very least, right? Um, so, you know, we're at that point now where they can just say, yeah, we're villains. We're the bad guys, right? And <laughs> we're happy to be it, you know, because we, we just want the power. I, I think that's one of the next steps, right? It's like, we don't care anymore. We're, we're just going to show how evil we are. Um, and, and you know, uh, this, is, this wouldn't be the first time that, this particular type of activism has decided to attach its imagery and its, you know, to own, uh, to, to own for them, to claim for themselves um, hideous monsters, right? Like they've done this with serial killers. They did this with Cruella de Vil, right? Like you would think if you're, you know, and, and I'm sure that there's a lot of gay people out there who are horrified by this sort of stuff, right? Just like, you know, I know, we know that there are people that are LGBT that are horrified by the kind of, you know, by the sort of things that are going on now in schools and the sort of things that are going on in the pride events and all of that. 
because they just want to kind of have normal lives. And th these maniacs have taken over their whole system, right? Um, but, you know, this is... This is this is something where they, you know, Corella Deville, right? Like they 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 hold her up as a queer icon. Like you would think the horrible monster that wants to kill little puppies would not be someone you'd want as an icon of your movement, but they do, right? So maybe the all controlling secret society is something they want to be thought of as, right? Like that nobody can escape us, that we will be in charge of everything. You know, maybe that's maybe it's real. You know, or maybe. Steve Jackson, <laughs> Steve Jackson Games is is a a company full of of idiots that didn't think through the symbolism of what they were doing. <laughs> I will leave it to you to decide. Uh, feel free to comment below. That's everything for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it in the in any social media where you think people will find it interesting or get pissed off about it. Um, subscribe and hit the notification button. Don't miss community posts where you get pictures of meatball and other important other important information so like you know you got to hit the notification thing to make sure that you don't miss anything from this youtube channel which i am much more active in nowadays than i used to be and uh if you if you want to support me check out my products like the invisible college right which is a, a fantastic modern occultism role play game if you're getting kind of tired of always just fighting cthulhu tentacle monsters in your modern occult games <laughs> the invisible college is different than that you know it's got a a whole other style. The Gonzo Fantasy Companion, which is full of uh, weird uh, fantasy and uh, you know sci science fantasy stuff that you could add to any of your RPGs. Uh, social Encounters on the Silk Road, a guide to using the social mechanics of OSR for advanced interactions that don't involve you know having uh, social skill points and stuff like that. Um, and all my other stuff, Lion and Dragon and Star Adventure and all the rest, you can find the links to all of my products in the, the expansion of the description of this video. You just click more where there's a little more thing and uh, it'll expand and there'll be links to any of my products that you can go pick up. And if you don't have a lot of money, you can check out the RPG Button Presents series. It's uh, 109, I think now, eight or nine, I forget, uh, issues that are all, you know, short source books that give you some something cool that you can use in your games. And it's like you're buying me a coffee, you know. So keep keep checking all that out. It's more stuff coming very soon, apparently. More products. And uh, I uh, hope we'll see you again shortly. Currently smoking this beautiful Lorenzetti Hawkbill with Argento Roots.